After severe brain injury, one of the key challenges is for neurologists and critical care physicians to determine the prognosis of the patient. Who will do well and who won't do well? Families need to know that, the healthcare team needs to know that in order to make decisions regarding continuing uh, supportive care for patients. One of the most promising tools uh, in development for the prognosis of these patients is functional magnetic resonance imaging. Doing research on fMRI in intensive care units, though, is, is very difficult. Uh, there are ethical challenges, and these haven't been adequately sort of characterized to date. In our paper in BRAIN, we lay out for the first time an ethical framework for researchers and research ethics committees as they design, conduct, and review functional MRI studies in the intensive care unit context. The question is, is in a particular study, is functional MRI a therapeutic procedure or a non-therapeutic procedure? Early in the translational trajectory of, of functional MRI, it's, it's very likely that um, there is not going to be evidence really uh, making a direct connection between fMRI and direct patient benefit. As a result, in, in those studies, fMRI is going to be best considered as a non-therapeutic procedure. Later on, as evidence develops about the use of fMRI as a prognostic tool, it may be reasonable to suppose that, that fMRI does offer some direct benefit to study participants. And in those cases, it may appropriately be considered uh, a therapeutic uh, procedure. So the challenges in the intensive care unit when we're doing research on functional MRI are numerous. The first ones that we encounter are really working with the, the patient's family because the patient's not able to make decisions on their own. So making sure that the family understands what the research entails and what, uh, what risks or benefits it may or may not have for their family member. <laughs> Secondly, considering the, just the plain stability of the patient from a medical point of view. So many patients after they've had a severe brain injury will have trouble with high pressures in their brain or with maintaining their blood pressure and so they need to be in particular positions or have lots of medications to help support them. And because of this it can be really difficult and needs to be considered carefully before they're considered to be eligible for the study or can be transported to the fMRI scanner. Critically ill patients are a, are a vulnerable group and a, accordingly they're entitled to additional protections in research. One of the key protections actually sets a, a threshold or a limit, if you will, on the non-therapeutic risk uh, to which these patients can be exposed. So if, if fMRI in a particular study is, is considered a therapeutic procedure, that is if there's the prospect of direct benefit to the patient, this threshold in fact doesn't apply. FMRI, the use of fMRI in a particular study is justified by appeal to clinical equipoise. But if fMRI is a non-therapeutic procedure, it's really important that researchers and research ethics committees determine carefully that the risks of fMRI in a particular study are no more than a minor increase above minimal risk. And that's actually quite a rigorous uh, standard for, for studies to pass. The end goal for introducing this framework is really to try and enable functional MRI and other research in intensive care units uh, for brain injured patients uh, in as many different places as possible. It's very difficult research to do because of the patient population that you're trying to target and because of how sick they are. And so I think it's important that researchers, clinicians and research ethics boards really have a framework that they can work from to try and make these studies successful.